name is Zachary Dine, uh, use he, him, his pronouns. Um, originally from Los Angeles, California, and I, work, I graduated from Willamette in the BA, MBA, three, two, five-year program. So my, my undergraduate major was sociology. Um, and then at the MBA program, my concentration was operations and systems and analysis along with public uh, and nonprofit management. And I also had the opportunity to complete the, at the time, brand new uh, graduate certificate in data science for business during my MBA program as well. Hi, my name is Zach Karoyan. I'm a computer science, data science double major in the 3 1 program, so I'm also getting my master's. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm from Edmonds, Washington. And um, what's the last one? I'm a senior. <laughs> Hi, my name is Izzy. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a senior at Willamette where I'm studying computer science and environmental science. Hi, I am Mia Kunishi. I'm a fourth year at Willamette University. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns. I call home rest in Virginia, and I'm an environmental science major. My name's Risa. I use she, her, her pronouns. I'm a fourth year studying exercise and health science and I call Redmond, Washington home. Yeah, the Hearth and Ford has been great, not only to study together late at night, but also um, we have these weekly CST meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's a time when professors and students come together and there's often a presentation and tea and cookies. And it's great to just build friendships and community and get to know your professors better. We have a computer lab in Ford 204. Um, that has 24 hour access with a code. Um, and we typically use um, all open source software. So we use Python and R Studio, um, both of which are free and you can get a license for to use at any time. Um, and I think the computer lab has around uh, 20 machines. Um, so it's really nice to use if you um, are just working on stuff and you're on campus or uh, you need internet access or access to just any powerful machine. For both majors, actually, the computer labs and the hearths have been an incredible asset. Um, for computer science, we have the lab and hearth in Ford and for environmental science, it's in Collins. And not only do we have like 24 hour access to computers and software on there, but it's also just a great place to meet up with friends and classmates and work on labs right up until they'll right up until they're due and just work on those projects together. During the MBA program, every student takes a, a uh, an intro to essentially an intro to the business analytics course where we all learn different statistical methods and processes using the R programming language. Uh, and use the RStudio software to run that program. And then in the graduate certificate in data science program, there's an emphasis on using R along with some other programming languages in data science like Python, um, and along with the structured query language, uh, SQL, uh, data management programming language as well. Two spaces on campus that are specifically for exercise and health science are the fourth floor of Collins and Gatke. Gatke is also the home to sculpture and archaeology. Our exercise and health science has this huge space um, that is full of like all of our equipment. We have a bod pod, a few treadmills, um, some stationary bikes, as well as many different um, like instruments that we can use um, to do all of our like experiments and exercise and or in exercise physiology, um, as well as some of our biology courses. We also use that space um, for clinical healthcare, where we focus on um, finding muscles on each other and also like doing different exercises. We also use that space for biomechanics. Um, and then in the fourth floor of Collins, and Collins is also the home to chemistry, biology, environmental science, and physics. Um, we have a space for cadavers, um, and that's something that's really unique about the undergrad program here at Lamet for exercise and health science is that we have our own cadavers. 
Um, we get a new set, like two um, cadavers every year. And um, it's just really cool having that hands-on experience, being able to do dissections and whatnot. And then we also have a human physiology lab um, with different like programs on these computers, as well as like um, we dissect frogs and different things like that. The computer lab is available to anyone in a computer science class and it's open it's open door from nine to five so even if you don't have a code you can just walk in and use the machines um and uh in terms of who can go in like like i said anyone can go in um you can take computer science classes without being a declared major um, the learning resources were available but on a class by class basis so um they, they came as part of the uh, enrollment in the entire graduate certificate program, and I believe that's part of the uh, uh, full master's degree that's offered now as well. Um, and those are integrated into those curricula. Um, for computer science, a software that's been really fun for me was MATLAB because Willamette purchased that for students, um, unlike a lot of them, which are just free and open source. Um, and for environmental science, there's a lot of really cool GIS software like QGIS and Arc Pro, which has been awesome to work with. Yeah, I think the labs are open to everyone, um, but personally, I wouldn't know how to use the software <laughs> until I've taken a class in it. So I have used it um, while I'm in the class and then afterwards. But I maybe if you're a brave soul that likes to teach yourself, you could go in and try to learn it before the class, but that's how I did it. Um, but for Gaki, once you take exercise physiology, which you can take as early as first semester, your second year here at Willamette, um, as well as in the introduction class, you get tours of all of these facilities. And one of my favorite parts of the intro class is we actually don't have class on Fridays um, because it is a half credit. But on those Fridays, we have these like optional tours, which are really fun and you're able to go in. And I remember like we were able to like conduct VO2 max tests and BOD pod tests. And of course the professor was right there with us helping. Um, and now it's really cool. It's like a third and fourth year, you were able to do all those tests on their, your own um, because you learn about all the like instruments and whatnot. Um, but yeah, pretty much starting your second year. And then especially if you do any form of um, research, then you are definitely able to um, have access to that whenever. As an undergraduate, I had the opportunity to be a statistics tutor at the Quad Center, the Center for Quantitative Understanding, Analysis, and Design. And so uh, I really enjoyed the introductory statistics class that I had. Um, and enjoy being able to share my interest in it and dive deeper into some of the different programming languages or other software tools that are used for statistical analyses and data science with my fellow peers. And that really gave me a pretty solid foundation in, in the basics and in, that, in those um, fundamentals. So then not only once I moved on to the MBA program to be able to use them in those classes, but also through an internship I had at the uh, United Way of the mid Willamette Valley here in Salem, which was uh, an internship I did during, between my first and second year of the MBA program. And there I was basically given free reign to um, find any, to do as many data analysis projects as I, as I could that would help their different operations, the different missions and goals at the um, that the United Way was working toward. Yeah, I actually, so I went abroad my junior year and I, to New Zealand, which was awesome. And I took a oceanography class there. And in the class, I had no idea, but we were gonna be using um, Python and MATLAB. And my having experience with that from Willamette really helped me to be able to excel in that class abroad, which was awesome. Oh I was a little worried about double majoring, especially yeah. going abroad, because I was like, is that possible? Has anyone done that before? Um, but my professors were really great in working with me to figure out like 
what classes count, what am I able to take, what am I prepared for, so it definitely worked out. I think Xena One is a great place for students to go if they want to be like immersed in nature and also like a great opportunity for to even write a grant proposal if you do want to do research at Xena. We have opportunities for um, the Salem community and pretty much whoever to come in and do different tests like VO2 max, um, have their bod pod. And it's really cool because we as students are able to do that and that's actually a job on campus. We can um, facilitate those and that also looks really good on a resume. We have these labs that will take us 25 plus hours outside of these six hours we're in lab and class. Um, and we still have to be using all of that equipment. So it's really cool that when there's like 16 people in the class or whatnot, it's usually I think a bit smaller than that, then we are still able to like have all those resources and not have to be like waiting to use those computers and whatnot. So when I took the classes, they were taught in Java and now they've switched over to Python. Um, but I do a lot of personal projects in both Java and Python. So for example, um, uh, for my fraternity, I've been working on uh, creating a program to try and uh, clean the data that we have locally of our chapter's history and um, converting that into something that's actually searchable and usable. So I've done two different uh, research opportunities with Professor Cheng, um, one in the summer of 2019 and one in the summer of 2020. For the summer of 2020, I used my personal machine, um, but for the summer of 2019, I had a key and I had access to machines on campus to do the research. The first one was a computer science specific um, internship, and I was working in conjunction with um, one of the communications professors to try and um, identify patterns within the 2016 election. and. Um, the Russian trolls on Twitter. So we were using sentiment analysis to try and figure out what uh, tactics they used to um, try and sway the political sphere um, during, specific, around the debates and right before the election. And then the second research opportunity I did was based around um, loan sentiment analysis. So we took um, loan applications that were accepted and used the textual content of it to try and predict whether the um, payee would actually be able to fully pay on the loan or whether they would default. So using cues like um, whether they were lying or whether um, you know their grammar was good or if they had misspellings and using those, those features to try and see if they would be more likely or not to actually pay off the loan. So for computer science, I've done independent projects like working with the exercise science department and using their data about like landing trials of gymnasts which was really cool environmental science department but i'm using a lot of my computer science skills mm -hmm. um, so i'm doing my honors thesis in climate modeling right now and i am working with professor meyer she's writing a paper on ocean acidification at the end permian mass extinction which was over 250 million years ago so a long time ago um, but we're using this model that was written in matlab to have runs of data and then we're using that data um, and I'm making plots in our studio that will go into the paper. One program that was just published was a VO2 max test and they were using different types of masks. So they did a medical mask and one of those like athletic like Adidas masks kind of and they saw how the VO2 max was um, like in like impacted by the by the masks, which was really cool. Um, and so what's really nice is that you're able to go in at any time and use those um, facilities. I haven't done specific research with professors. I mean, I've had research intensive classes. So for example, like my forest management class, that's fairly research intensive where we go to the Xena property, which is the property near uh, Willamette where it's, we do, uh, we core trees and analyze them for data and then later use that to translate into policy. Um, but some internships that I have had was I had the opportunity to have an internship in Japan at AIST, which is like the Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, 
where I basically did research on um, bioinformatics, which is analyzing genes. Um, and well, in my case, I was looking for a, cer a certain microorganism that would make water treatment systems more like efficient. Each of the courses revolved around creating a final project that um, we could then use to create to create a portfolio to show to employers when we're on the job search or searching for an internship, um, saying not only here are the skills that I have to list on the resume, but also here are examples of not only here are the examples of the kinds of tests I know how to run, the types of code I know how to write, but also the types of questions that I know how to ask, the different topics that I'm interested in. Um, and really showing that critical thinking that is so important in data science and analytics that I think often gets overlooked as we kind of are also really focused on building that technical knowledge in programming and math. Outside of like my environmental science degree, I think skills that I've learned that have been like particularly useful and helpful is through like my biogeochemistry class, we emphasize on like analyzing data, interpreting it, and then communicating it in a way that's easier for people who may not have a science background to understand, which are skills that are super applicable in like a setting, for example, of policy, or if you're collaborating with someone from another department, kind of giving insight and being able to communicate that are just like some skills that I've been able to learn and apply, as well as like grant writing um, is a super applicable skill that I've been able to use in different settings, whether that be related to environmental science or not, um, as well as like conducting research, whether that be like through interviews um, and then later like interpreting it and then kind of presenting it, all these skills I've been able to use with outside of my environmental science degree. So, um, and yeah, like I mentioned before, I think there's this weird gap between like with communication and especially communicating science and like the data part of it because it becomes really it's hard to dissect and you kind of have to take a while and you're like looking at the graph and you're like, I have no idea what, like what this says. So being able to kind of like look at it, dissect it, talk about, talk about it with your peers and then be able to communicate it are skills that I found really helpful, especially with people who like may not have like a science background, which I find like super important, like as we're moving forward in this day and age, especially when like when we're making policy, it's in regards to like the environment. I think it's super important for that communication to happen between like policymakers and scientists. So I am very happy that I've been able to kind of use that skills, especially at my internship uh, at the Capitol, just because like a lot of them don't, like the people I work with have more like law backgrounds or um, political backgrounds. So they're not necessarily understanding the full realm of like all the biogeochemical cycles that are happening and what that means for us. So it's been a great way kind of like applying those skills and using that. Um, all of the classes are four hours and meet once a week. Um, so the emphasis is more on uh, a lot of group activities. Um, so we have a lot of projects and it's um, a really good networking opportunity because um, right now I'm the only undergrad in the program. So all of them, all of all the rest of my cohort are current professionals that are coming back for their degree. Um, so you, you get to meet a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life um either you know 10 20 years into their career and looking to change or five to ten years in and looking to get a promotion and so um, it's a really good place to to try and connect with people and and um, network there since graduating from the mba program from the ba mba program i'm now a fiscal grant analyst for the Oregon Department of Education. So I help uh, grant managers um, throughout a variety of Department of Education grants that go out to school districts, nonprofits, um, and sometimes even individual schools themselves. Um, I help the managers of those grants uh, understand their budgets and manage, um, basically manage their money. And so I was able to use those skills finance and accounting skills from the MBA program. Um, my interest in social studies, so, sociology, social studies, um, general public policy that I developed during my undergraduate degree, working for the Department of Education, 
but the mechanics of actually running of actually running those budget reports um, and providing that useful information for uh, Department of Education grant managers. I'm using a lot of that data science skills, writing writing code uh, to pull all the numbers and give them the most useful information. Really good projects I can show, um, as well as paid um, experience. Um, but a lot of the classes um, are very project oriented. So a lot of um, the deliverables you have, you can save and have as example code um, when you're applying to other jobs or even just to keep as a refresher um, if you are coming back to and like, hey, how do I how do I do this? I, I know I did something in this class. Um, I just can't remember. Um, so it gives you a lot of uh, good example code that you can that you can use. Give a lot of good presentation skills and working with others and a lot of the, the good stuff that you need for when you actually graduate and then go on to work a real job. I have learned so much at my time at Willamette. Like I came in knowing knowing that I liked environmental science and I was interested in computer science, but I've learned so much. I've taken classes in five different programming languages. One of them I had never even heard of before I came here. Um, and I'd say for environmental science, the experience with GIS is so, so transferable. Um, a lot of the jobs that I look for, they have that on their list. They want people to know GIS. Um, so not only though, has it given me those like hard skills of like programming languages, but I also feel like overall Willamette has given me a lot of soft skills, um, especially from the liberal arts education that are really yeah. exciting too. I think like, especially with environmental science being such an interdisciplinary major, um, I've been able to look at things with a different perspective and different lens. So whether that be like public health or social equity, as well as like climate change and who it impa who is impacted the most, kind of having those lenses has been something I've been able to apply in different settings, um, which has been great to like see and actually use. Um, so one thing that's really cool is I'm able to put all of the like equipment that we use, programs that we use, I can put those all on my resume, um, which looks really, really good, especially in like just the technical world we live in today. Um, even if I'm not going into a field necessarily in exercise and health science, I'm more going into a field of public health, um, but that still looks really good that I'm able to analyze this information, understand what it does, as well as use the equipment that like analyzes the information.